Hey, this is Andrew Collier from CollierMusic.com, and we're coming at you with another main stage programming video today. Today we're working on a tutorial uh, for the classic rock band, The Tubes. Uh, my buddy Dave Met has been the keyboard player and vocalist with The Tubes since 1996. They had eight studio albums in the 1970s and 1980s on A&M Records and Capitol Records. And I have been Dave's sub since 2012. I got to play with them this last summer. And today we're going to show you how to import a song if you have a song from a previous concert and you need to bring it into the con current concert that you're working with. So let's say that <clears throat> you need to do that. The first thing I'm going to do, here's my, here's my uh, song list over here. And I've shown you some other videos on how... I organized this, and I was trained, well, one of my mentors is David Rosenthal. He's been Billy Joel's musical director since about 1993 or 1994. So all your patches, all your sounds are at the top of this patch list. And then down here is where all the songs are with all the individual patches that you use that you're going to step through for your concert. So let's say that I need to go back and I need to put in a song that... Uh, that I use in another concert. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, just to be safe and accurate, is I'm going to insert a new set. Okay, and then that's going to, I'll leave it untitled for now, and then I'm going to go insert a new patch. So I've got this new set and this new patch. Now, while this patch is clicked or selected or highlighted, see how it's blue? You go to, you go like that, you go to right here where it says patch library, and then underneath that you click user patches. Now, sometimes when you click the user patches, I have, you know, seven years of main stage concerts in here. So you got a lot of stuff to scroll through. So let's see if I can go back to the last tube set I was working on here. If I click on that, then what you see here is this list is going to be all of the sets or patches that you have over here. So the top half is going to be like there's my alchemy patches. Here's my Arturia patches. Okay, here's my contact patches, IK Multimedia patches, Main Stage patches, Native Instruments patches. So this is always going to be listed alphabetically. It's going to take, from, your, from, from this concert that's selected or highlighted, it's going to take everything in this entire patch list, and it's going to put it in alphabetical order over here in this list. So it's going to be, it's going to scramble the list, but it's alphabetical. So let's say I'm going to look for the song... I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at two different tube set lists. One was their full concert, which is about a 90-minute to two-hour set list. And then there's, they had a 75-minute set. And, and so, you know, um, like the, here's my 75-minute sets I was programming. And then down here at the bottom is the, the longer, you know, headlining concerts. So let's say I want to go find something and stick it in here, like, I don't know, a uh, theme park. So I'm going to scroll to theme park. Boom. And I'm just going to go click theme. And so, so there's what the set, this is the folder list, the set, you know. And then here's the patch. So I'm going to click on that. Now, it's going to talk to me about an alias, which we'll come back to in a minute. So always just say add. You're going to add it in. <clears throat> so what it's going to do is it's going to put the entire patch in here. So see all these things? All these things are being inserted. Now what you can't see on the recording is a spinning pizza wheel of death because now it's got to put in, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. And a bunch of these at the time I was programming were all aliases that pointed back to these patches that were up here. When it imports that new thing, when it imports all those patches, none of them are going to be aliases. So what you'll need to do is figure out which ones you know, you have an alias from here, you have to copy it in and paste it, you'll have to delete this one. It's going to require some work, but you don't have to start from scratch. All of your hard work of finding sounds and zoning and programming is done. You'll just have to fix the aliases. And I have other videos on that. I'm not going to go into that now. The one thing I am concerned about is all these things will play. I'm not worried about that. Okay, see that? Like, you're not going to hear this right now. You're not going to hear any of it because... I'm using the screen capture recording and it's using the, you know, yeah, you're not going to hear any of that. My biggest concern is the sample at the bottom. So I'm going to hit 
this bottom A. And in fact, I don't even need to use a keyboard. I'll go up here and just press it with my mouse. Boom. And it's doing this probably farting sound that it does. If I click on this EXS24 and I click edit, does it bring the sample in? <clears throat> it did not. However, that is because I don't think I finished programming this theme park sample. So that's not the problem of the computer. That's because I may not have done it. So that's something I may have to check on. Um, <clears throat> but that's how you bring all, that's, that's another video for another thing to look at as to where, what happened, did that come in, did that not come in? Um, but I'm trying to keep these videos short. So that's basically how you go retrieve a song or an entire, all this set of programming from a previous, from a previous concert. Okay, hope that answered that question. I get the spinning pizza wheel of death, which you cannot see. So at this point, I'm going to hit the space bar in this video. Thanks a lot. Rock on. Prog out. Have a great day.